this word is not for a particular person this word is not for a particular family this word is not for a particular group it is for the church it is the self assessment session here so when the word is preached don't look to right don't look to left but this word we will look into it as if it is spoken to us okay you know there are three types or three categories we fall into one of the categories we always fall into when the word is come to us either we obey the word you know willingly or compelled we obey second thing we disobey the word of god that is our choice but the third one is very dangerous that we deliberately choose to do against what is commanded to do so we all of us we fall into one of these categories at times so this word if it is rubbing the wrong side please bear with the word not with me bear with the word allow the word to do the surgery in us this evening you know we go for a health checkup right executive health checkup we go we put a tick mark you know the the tbc what the total blood count then rbc the red blood cell and then wbc white blood cell and then we come to the fasting blood sugar then post meal and then we come to uric acid then we come to cholesterol the total cholesterol then the triglyceride what is that okay that is the one then hdl and ldl and then we check our creatinine level all these things we check and then we put a tick mark some of them are in the border some of them are safe some of them is above the border line then we take remedy so this evening the word allow the word to do the surgery and allow god to speak to us this evening don't look to me i am also standing along with you that i am also been you know falling into those one of the categories at times so god is speaking to us take it in that way god will honor you let's bow our heads in prayer before we proceed spirit of the sovereign lord fall afresh we look up to you this evening o oh god we want you to speak father i pray that sanctify my lips nothing will come out of my own but everything will come from the throne room of god and will be edified will be changed will be chastised in the name of jesus christ of nas we will be transformed through the word of god and when we go back from this place of god we will not go the same way we came in but lord we will go with joy and believing that god spoke to us we give you praise we give you glory all the transformation what is going to happen this evening you receive the praise you receive the glory you receive the honor as we sang you are our god and we depend on you we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen, amen. the title of the word is environmental sanitation through our living it's a weird heading you know i don't know from where i got it i was reading something then i was talk you know reading about environmental then this came so i said okay let me build on that so i said okay let me put it environmental sanitation through our living style how we bring the change in our environment that's what basically how we can bring the change into this world because god has invested his precious son's precious blood over our lives so that we will become a catalyst of change to many in this world and how we can prove that we are the children of the most high god through our living the environment actually is totally polluted the environmental more than the physical the ratio of spiritual pollution has increased you all know that every day the wickedness in this world is arising it's going of late the world is mixing into the world that's what coming into the market you know everywhere not only the market in the church and mean market means the church the world is trying to mix the world and the world is mixing into the churches and it has become common of late everywhere that's what happening the sanitation means the dictionary meaning the system used to keep healthy standards in a place where people live especially by removing the waste products and garbage safely that is called sanitation is a you know blind meaning you know clean everything which is thrown in front of your house through you know clean everything it is thrown in your street through you know clean everything which is thrown on your circumstances in a proper way so that you are living in a healthy environment if we don't maintain proper sanitation in our surroundings then diseases can spread due to poor sanitation 
That's what happens always. If we don't maintain our lifestyle, which is supposed to be according to the word of God, then we are creating an illness and we are creating a bacterial life. We are creating, a, you know, full of fungus and then which is not going to bless us. It is mandatory to remove the trash spiritually and clean up every garbage trash spiritually so that our living will be healthy and we can make others also to live in a healthy way. Though all these things I wrote it, but I have to read it. It is not stored. That time it was led by the Spirit, so I wrote everything. Now, very importantly, every Christian must understand there is a spiritual threat everywhere. Do you agree on that? Everywhere there is a spiritual threat against the Christianity. We talk about global warming everywhere, but spiritual global warming is rising up. It is more dangerous than the physical global warming, the spiritual global warming everywhere. And that is what exactly happening in this world. Now, the devil is so busy in its business and much focused in its task, so, and also very successful in divide and rule the countries, the communities, and off late to the churches. The devil is so cunning and it is working with much efficient way that it will divide and rule even the churches. The spiritual atmosphere must be maintained by every believer round the clock. That means we are not on vacation. Round the clock, we must maintain the spiritual atmosphere every minute, every second, because the devil is working ahead of us. We need to reach. That's very important. And Christian, like us, the believers, plays a major role concerning the spiritual atmosphere. It is our responsibility to bring change in our atmosphere. For that, what we will do? The power is already given to us. Do you believe that the power is given to all of us? The power is given to us to control the spiritual climate by you. By you alone, you can control. Because God is standing with you. Bible says one man with God is majority. If you stand with God to control the spiritual you know, climate, God will support you. You know, in the Bible, we are reading what? One man stood. He said, Lord, let the sun stand still. It stood still. One man said, three and a half years, no rain, Lord. It stood still. You have the power to control the spiritual climate so that people will turn to the Lord God Almighty. So the power is given to all of us. That's why I said, this is the self-evaluation session. We will look into us when the word is coming to us. We will not look to right or left, but where we are standing, we will ask God to, you know, grow, you know, prune us so that we will be more fruitful in his kingdom. The first scripture of the day, Matthew 16, verse 19. I have given or I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is period. It's given by Jesus Christ to his disciples and it passed on to every one of us. The keys of heaven is given to all of us. Say to yourself, the keys of heaven is in my hand. The keys of heaven is in your hand or in my hand, right? whatever. Say it and believe it. The keys of heaven is given to you. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever, because you don't have to go physically to heaven that after death to bind something. From here, the keys are given to all of us. You bind something from here on earth, it will be automatically bound in heaven. You lose something from here, from the earth, it will be loosened in heaven. And one man or one woman or one child or one youth with God is a majority. Everyone, when we stand with God, do not look to the size or do not look to the age. Even the child, when it stands with God, like Samuel, at the age of three, he stood with God, God called him to speak. And then David, when he was a young boy, God spoke to him. And then even the elder people, God speaks to every man. And one man, one woman, one child, one youth, stands with God is majority and we all have the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven but those keys are unused long time that is why the environmental is totally polluted because the keys are given to us but we are not using the keys and if at all we are using the keys we are using with the wrong doors 
The keys are given to us to open the right door so that everything will be opened. The keys are given to us to you know, close every door, the right door, but we are not closing it because we put the keys. The keys doesn't change. The keys never change because keys are given by God. The door we are standing is the wrong door. We need to shift ourselves to move to the right door where it can open so it will be open from heaven. We try to bind. What do we do? We try to bind each other rather than binding something which is from the devil. Many a times we don't realize that the devil is our enemy. You know, when we sing the song, you know, we turn on one song, and one particular song, remember? I see Satan has fallen. We first look to the front, and then we look to the back. Then when we look to the back, you know, we look to the person who's standing behind me. Satan has fallen. No. He is not our Satan, by the way. Satan is one for all of us. So let us mean it, the Satan is one. So we bind every Satan, so the Satan will be bound in heaven. It will be arrested completely, spiritually, so that it cannot have any power in your you know, surrounding. At the time, sometimes we dilute the scriptures to our favor and we inject pollution to that word. There is more focus. There is more focus on each other's move than the move of the devil. We are so much focused on each other's move, you know, what this guy is doing, what he is doing, what she is doing, what is doing. Let us concentrate on the move of the enemy, what is doing and where he is going. Because the devil has a big strategy to divide and rule and the atmosphere is polluted. No more we will allow the atmosphere to be polluted, but we will come back. If we are careful and you will know the move of the enemy, but we are so busy with watching others move. God has given us the authority to bring a mega change in our lives first and in our families and in our community. How this will be successful or how we can make it possible? Few things we are going to look into. As I said, when the word of God comes to us, we obey blandly and we obey sometimes compelled, sometimes we disobey, sometimes we do opposite to the word of God. So I'm focusing on few things which when we do opposite to command by, commanded by God. Like imagine, now, few characters in the Bible. Who? Jonah. What God said? Jonah, go to this place, in Nineveh, and just go and tell them that I am going to, you know, destroy them. Go and tell them or warn them. What he did? He did not disobey alone, but what he did? He took the opposite direction, and he, you know, did not want to go. He took different direction to go. That is number one. Number two, what happened? Another character in the Bible? Who is that? Saul. God said, destroy every animal, right? Nothing to be kept. When you win the war, nothing to be kept. What he did, he kept something that is a disobedient. Not only that, he started to use the same animals to sacrifice unto the Lord God Almighty. So, we kindle the fire of God by doing wrong things. And then, Cain, what he did? He and his brother went offer the sacrifice unto the Lord God Almighty. But then Cain got upset with his brother and he, instead of repenting of his offering unto the Lord God Almighty, instead of changing his style or his pattern to sacrifice unto the Lord God Almighty, what he did? He killed his brother. So to prove that what he is doing is right, what his brother was doing is wrong. No, we cannot do that. Truth is truth. False is false. Lie is lie, truth is truth. We cannot kill the truth, so we have done everything. Like, you know, uh, someone says that when the cat drinks the milk, it closes the eyes and drinks the milk, thinking the whole world is in dark and it's drinking. But in reality, the lights are on and everyone can see the cat is drinking the milk. So, but we do at times opposite. But whereas, this guy who, David, he was supposed to go to the war, right? But what he did? He was on the rooftop. First of all, he should not be in that rooftop when the war is going on. Second thing, he should not look to the woman because she is another man's wife. That is again against his word, God's word. That also he did. He should have stopped and repented and come out from there. But he went ahead and deliberately did against the will of God, against the word of God. And that is what many times we do unknowingly. And then, you know, we pollute the atmosphere in the kingdom of God. Because why I say this, you know, why I choose this topic, the people in the world is looking at us. 
The people in the world are looking at us that you are the catalyst change of this world because God has brought you for a purpose that you will bring the change. If, imagine, if the people see our lifestyle and they say, no, this is the religion you're talking about, this is the God you're talking about, I don't want you. I'm having better life than what you are having, then what a shame we are bringing to the kingdom of God. That is why God is saying that you are called to make environmental sanitation that because you are the sanitizer unto the world, that you wash everything. That's what God says. Then few characters in Bible, Moses, for example, when God called him, what he did? He wanted to disobey God blindly that, you know, Lord, and how you can send me, don't send me. That God actually likes it. God has, you know, uh, the ability to convince you, then you go and then you don't turn back, right? And then even Gideon, he asked millions of questions to God when God wanted him to go to the war. That God accepts it. But there are two sons. When father said, one son, go to the field, he said, yes, dad, I will go, but he didn't go. But the other son, he said, I will not go, dad, but he, on the way he changed his mind. So where we fall, God is asking us this evening, so where you are bringing the change into the world? I'm sure. Then how we can make it as successful? A small thing. We'll start with prayer, right? Your prayer actually has the power to change the spiritual climate. Do you agree with it? Yes. Your prayer has the power to change the spiritual climate every day, every day. Every day the devil is trying to change the spiritual climate, but your prayer has the power to change everything what the devil destined in that spiritual climate, and you have the power in your hand. That's why I said the keys of heaven is given to all of us. If you bind, it will be bound. It, if you lose, it will be loosened. What you are doing with the key. I'm sure all of us have a private time with the Lord God Almighty, right? Every one of us have. But if I ask you a question, how much you are involved in your private time with the Lord, many of us will not be in that list. You know, Martin Luther said very, you know, beautifully he said. When a person uh, shaves his beard, his eyes, his concentration, his mind on the razor and the place where is the razor going on. Imagine nowadays, you watch a mobile and you keep shaving, what will happen? You cut either here, either you cut when you shave here, you cut your lips. When you cut, shave here, you cut your throat, right? Right or not? So, for a shaving, that much attention is required, that much concentration is required, that much mind is required, then how much more we need to have that concentration to have a good prayer? We, we need to have it. You know, ladies, okay, you are happy because I'm talking about shaving, right? When you color your hair with the mehendi or whatever, <laughs> imagine you don't concentrate on it. Then what will happen? Here some mehendi will be there, here will come. When I dye my hair, I'm very careful at times, you know. But thank God my color is almost with the black, so it does. <laughs> Praise be to God. That's why somebody says, you know, I go to parlor. <laughs> Prayer time is not your parlor time, by the way. Prayer time is your personal time. Don't allow somebody else to pray that you are in the parlor, no. Amen. Now, I have experienced few times in my house when my house help cooks the food. Her concentration went off and she put the salt twice. What will happen? Can you eat the food? For a meal, 40 minutes it takes to cook. If you are not concentrating on the food, then every, every energy, your vegetable, your chicken, your meat, everything is gone. And the energy is gone. And people, those who are eating, are suffering. Right or not? It is for the cooking of food, or it is rather shaving your beard or coloring your hair. If you need more attention, then prayer. How much more attention we need? Because when you sit on prayer, you are changing the spiritual climate, by the way. You are changing the atmosphere in the spiritual realm. But we fail to understand we are sitting with the Creator, we are sitting with the Lord of Lords, we are sitting with the King of Kings, and we are very quick to take the mobile. How many of us can keep away the mobile for half an hour or 45 minutes? Praise God for you. <laughs> very good. Only night you pick it up. <laughs> Praise God for it. Keep away. Keep away. 
when you do the things of God let not be any distractions that is actually idol worship and God hates idol anything comes as a substitute in God's presence it is idol and God does not like it first of all it is very difficult to get a private time right if at all we get a private time it's a great fight is going on with the wandering thoughts yeah our mind will start a tour will go will go will go everywhere it will go in europe and kadainallur and tenkasi and then come back and then end up in your job so we need to have a perfect time with the lord god almighty keep away every distractions and mainly the mobile when you pray that's very very important because you are having communion as i mentioned to you for outside world every day is a routine for outside world every day is a routine but for us is not a routine every day you are rewriting the history in god's kingdom which is destined by devil you are rewriting the history with god that means you are dis discussing with god the affairs of the world the things of his kingdom concerning you and concerning his kingdom concerning his church concerning his people that means you are having an important meeting with the creator that means no distraction at all and that if we succeed you are changing the environmental you know in a perfect way then the day will be in a perfect order the environment will be sanitized completely and everything which is planned by the devil which is already destroyed because we always fail to remember the moment we start to pray the angels are standing next to you with a golden censer it is so precious in god's eyes your prayer time when god comes with his angels you know to carry your prayer so that the prayer will not be hindered by anything but will be directly taken to the heaven and then they add up with you know incense and they pour it in the altar and then the answers come back imagine the angel is standing here with the golden censer you started to pray you sang one song after 5 minutes you go and check your mobile and or you think about something else or you know you think about yesterday's event you know the angel will not wait angel will not wait it is real your prayer is real if we are christian that is real your prayer life is real we don't fake anything and that's what god says it is not a routine i said mark 135 is the best example of jesus christ in the morning first thing what in the morning rising up a great while before day many years i have not seen sunset but praise god one angel came to my home waked me a lot and then now i see sunrise every day okay he went out he went out and departed into a solitary place and there he prayed see prayer is not a small thing in god's eyes i do not know how we take our prayer life but god doesn't take it in a small you know easy or you know in a in a normal way jesus christ in the morning he rose up while before a day and he went out he detached himself and then what it says departed into a solitary place which is the sacred place which is no distraction will come he stood there and then there he prayed the preparation took place that is why jesus was very particular in his prayer and he was bringing the environmental hygiene through his private time with god he cannot tell or he could not tell the sadducees and the pharisees that what i do my father tells me to do until unless he spend the time with the father every day in the night or in the morning he cannot tell them the same thing we cannot speak to the devil even though it, it has created an atmosphere for us to be defeated you cannot tell the devil hey baba i already spoke to my father and the permission is granted for me to overcome you you cannot tell him until unless you got up in the morning and then while before the day you just went out that means you it's not a routine for us that's what i said and then you depart from that place and to go to a solitary place and pray and then set the things in order and the devil automatically will bow down before you before you even go he brought a change in the spiritual weather by praying to the father our prayers must change the spiritual weather every day in our life you know it's not a see you know cloud seeding 
It's, sorry, it is like a cloud seeding rather, your prayers. But it will not bring any flu into you. Because it will bring rain and it will subdue every spiritual heat when you pray. And people will be blessed because of your prayer. Your prayer has more power than those who pray even to their unknown God. That's why I said, your prayer, when you start to pray, angels are standing with the censer and taking to the heaven. And other people, when they pray, even it cannot cross the roof. But your prayer has more power, it will reach. Your prayer actually changes the battleground, by the way, for the enemy. When you pray, the angels are mentioned to you. Now, you know eagle and the snake, right? Eagle is actually a little stronger than the snake. But yet, until unless the eagle does not change the battleground the snake can kill the eagle that's why the snake is taken by the eagle to the upper ground the air where the snake cannot operate the same way your prayer actually takes you into the spiritual realm where the mike angel the archangel will come and destroy every power of persia so that the climate is controlled by god so that you can enjoy every blessing the above or the checklist, as I mentioned to you. In the morning, rising up and then went out, departed to a solid place. Then you pray. These are the checklist. Another thing Jesus did, Luke 6, 12 to 13. It came to pass in those days, they went out into the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. We walk by faith, not by sight, right? But when we pray, we have that faith, God will answer every prayer, and we move on. You know, prayer is the communication network for us to set the things in order in the spiritual realm. That's what, you know, it happens. David inquired of the Lord every day before he does anything. Jesus prayed the whole night before he called even his disciples. And kingdom affairs, kingdom affairs are revealed to us when we pray unto the Lord God Almighty. His affairs will be revealed to all of us. That's what will happen. Yeah? God will speak to us about his plans and his purposes, about us and our church, and when we have our private time with God. The environment at your home will be cleansed when you have your quiet time with the Lord God Almighty. Anything you feel discomforted, Anything is disappointing at your home, your prayer has the power to change everything in order. That's why, you know, fasting prayer is very, very important. When you pray alone, your home environment is changed. But when you come together in the corporate fasting and prayer, the church environment is changed completely. You know, if I ask you a few questions, Andrea's father is in the hospital 17 days. You people, youth should have visited them, right? One of your own group, right? Visit them. It's very important. 17 days, 12 days in ICU, and four days still in the bed, still in the hospital. How many of us praying? Very few people we went, and of course they do everything, but still, it's our responsibility. One of our own brother, 17 days in the hospital, and that too, still he is in the hospital. Change the environment. If one man, if, if, if I'm drowning in the sea, for example, Though Sunil is the strongest man you can say, he cannot pull me alone, out. Because when I am in the water, he is also struggling, but I can pull him in. But all of you can come. It is very easy target for you to pull me out. 17 days, one man is lying in the bed, and he is swollen up. And how many of us are praying? It is easy target for all of us to, if you pray, he would have been come out now. That means our prayers are not that. Maybe a few people are struggling to pray. I'm not saying that one man's prayer is not answered. No, I'm not saying that. But corporate prayer has more power. Because the environment completely changed. That's why the you know, fasting prayer is very, very important. Because you are setting the church environment in a perfect order. That's why I said environment sanitation by our living. That means by our praying, coming together, standing together, and joining hand and hand together. You change the environment. And that must happen. In our church, many people, they don't have a job. How many of us praying, coming together and praying? If I offer somebody, okay, come for hospital ministry, everyone will roll up. But the ministry is right at the door. The man is lying in the hospital. Some people don't know is still in the hospital or not. 
I'm not blaming anybody. I said it is a self-evaluation time for all of us. It has to be done because it's our own man. Our own family member is lying in the hospital. How much we have to? It's one example current happening. But many people don't have job. How many of us standing in the gap and strengthening them and coming together in prayer and the fasting prayer? That actually changes the climate. That changes the climate because the enemy will constantly throw the garbage on the church, throw the trash on the church. But how much more you stand, you arise as a church to change that climate control. That is what God is asking us. When you come together in prayer, you are binding every strong man of the city. That's what happens. That's why we you know, shift the prayer every time in a different, different location. One day in Gises, one day in Karama, one day in New Dubai, one day in Mirdav, one day in Mizar. Even God willing, you know, we will open in Sharjah also. You know, we will do because geographically we cover every area and we bind every strong man when we come together. So that they will not operate. You control the spiritual climate, not them. Because God has given us the keys of heaven in us. And you are, the, you are having the power to bind every spiritual wickedness and every rulers of darkness. And you have the power. Another important factor for us to bring the environment and sanitation is our holiness. Prayer is one. Second, our personal holy living unto the Lord God Almighty. Our holiness has the power to drive out every ungodly things and every environmental pollution in our house, in our church, and in our community. We must display holiness in every area of our life on a daily basis. And we must get rid of every dirty jokes, by the way. We are holy people. When I talk about holiness, I'm not talking legalism, by the way. Legalism is different. I'm talking because God demands holiness. God demands holiness. God not only commands, but God demands. Why he had demanded? We took, partook of the table. He gave his son's precious blood and his body for us. He has all the right to demand holiness from us. It's not a command, but it's a demand because that is a basic requirement of a believer that we must be holy unto the Lord God Almighty. Daily basis. If you want to see God 24 by 7, you must be holy. That's it. No doubt. We cannot just make one day I am holy and second day I cannot. No. We cannot see God. And God doesn't take any vacation. We must be holy. Leviticus 19.2 Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Leviticus 20 verse 26 You must be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from all other people to be very own, to be my very own. That means God has set us apart by his son's precious blood that we must be holy. And it has to be. And 1 Peter 1.15 confirms again in the New Testament. But now you must be holy in everything you do just as God who chose you to be his children is holy. Man and woman must maintain the distance. Boy and a girl must maintain the distance. We must maintain the holiness. We must teach us. We must teach our children. We must teach our young people. We must teach even our fellow brothers and sisters to maintain uh, holiness in every area of our lives. No physical touch, by the way. No hugging, no kissing. I'm not talking legalism again, I say. You may say, my heart is clean, my mind is clean. Yes, but you don't have to show your love by hugging and kissing and put a hand somewhere, which is not appropriate. You can do everything with a shake and maximum. That's what you can do. Take it or leave it, but my duty is to inform you, to instruct you. I'm answerable to God, that's what I'm telling you. 1 Timothy 5, 1 to 2 says, Never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would to your own father. Talk to the younger men as you would to your own brothers. Treat older women as you would your mother, and treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. Purity is very, very important. And God commands purity in our relationship. We are very quick to follow the worldly culture. But biblical culture is very, very important. Biblical culture will bring every change in the environmental. Worldly culture will destroy every biblical culture. Respect the older person becomes a question mark nowadays. We call them by name. It's not allowed. We are not, you know, you know nowadays, you know, even parents cannot reprimand the children in some part of the world. They give complaint. 
but we follow, follow the biblical culture. We whack them. We not, don't spare the rod. They come to the Lord God Almighty. Otherwise, if you spare them now, you are never able to catch them. But in other parts of the world, they can go and give a complaint. But biblical culture, culture is very, very important for us. So that will change the environment. Because some children in the school, they can even manipulate their freedom to our children. Hey, Baba, your parents are beating you also. How come they can beat you? My father used to beat me even when I was studying in the college. And he does not beat me normally. He's a very strong man. He used to take me to the you know, shed where the cows are there. He used to beat me up, then I used to fall with the, with the cows. And he used to stamp on me. But still I didn't learn. Still I did not learn. But don't spare the rod. Anything comes against, comes against to live a godly life, shun from it. Anything, anything comes against to have a godly life, shun from it. 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for, a living, for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. And the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. By his marvelous glory and excellence, he called us, not by our works, but it is because of his marvelous glory, marvelous grace, marvelous excellence, he called us to be his own, to have a godly life. Because of his glory and excellence, verse 4, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. The power to lead a godly life comes forth from God alone. Amen? We cannot work out. But the power comes forth from God alone to have a godly life. We don't have any other resources to have a holy or godly life. Our resources are filthy rags completely. Our own resources are filthy rags. But God allows us to share his divine nature in order to keep us from sin and help us to live for him. God's precious promises will enable us to share his divine nature so that we will be away from corruption which is caused by fleshly desires. His promises will enable us to clothe ourselves with his divine nature so that you and I will be able to remove every corruption in this world. Another important flu in the air is mobile, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp. This is another flu. We must get rid of all these things. Holiness has become a big question mark in the Christendom. And also maintaining the holiness has become a big challenge in a Christian life. We must maintain holiness. We must make it a deliberate habit that we practice holiness in the eyes of God, in the kingdom of God. Galatians 2.20, why we have to do it? My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer who I live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave, me, gave himself for me. That means we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ lives in us means what? The word is living in us. The truth is living in us. That means we must get rid of our old worldly desires and everything. You crucify them. That's what we must do. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. That's what's mean. Jesus has finished his assignment within 33 years. And then we also called to finish our assignment when we are living in this world. We are here to clean the polluted atmosphere through the word of God. Uh, first I said prayer. Second thing I said holiness. Third thing is the word of God. We must get equipped with the word of God so that you have the power to speak to the situation. You will not search for the verses according to the situation, but you will be thorough in the word of God so that you will control every atmosphere which is coming against you. You must know how to operate in the word. You cannot talk to the devil or you cannot negotiate with the devil but you must confront the devil with the word of God and the word of the devil will fear only the word of God not us that's why I said change the ground always with the word of God so that the devil must flee away from us so prayer holiness is paramount important and word of God is very very important for us to operate in that word we must know where to use and how to use that word of God which situation we need to use the word of God that means we must spend time in the word of God Amen. We are here to wash away every unclean things by our lifestyle. We are here to stop somebody who is going to eternal fire. And we are going to divert them to come into the eternal heaven. That's what we need to know how to operate in the word of God. We are here to change the spiritual climate by our praises also. 
praises and worship makes a big change in the atmosphere. That also we need to. Amen. A true prayers will release the power of God over this nation to come out from every struggle. John 17, 14 to 19. God talks about the word and the prayer, everything we'll see here. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The world will hate us because of the word which we have in us. If the world likes us means we don't have the word in us. If the world hates us, that means we have the word of God in us. So it cannot be the other way. I pray that, verse 15, that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from every evil. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. That means God actually ordained us to be on this earth, but at the same time, God is saying that we will be away from every evil works. That's it. So God is not saying that, okay, you, you know, come to heaven and live with me. No. God is saying that I have given you the power and authority to live on this earth so that you will clean up everything after I left and you come later on. And God is praying, Jesus Christ is praying to the Father, do not take them from the world, but take them away from the evil world which is actually trying to torment them. This prayer of Jesus Christ will stand forever and ever. For the disciples it stood forever and all the prophets and the apostles stood and all the workers of the ministers of God, you know, it's standing and proved, you know, time and again that God is with them. God will not allow them to stay in the world, but God will always make sure that they are in, not in the evil world. And verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Thy word is the truth. God has made us holy through Jesus Christ, and the truth will keep us safe and secure. Now you and I will make this world holy from every environmental uncleanness and from every ungodliness. That is why God has cleansed us from every unrighteousness. As thou hast sent me into the world, verse 18, even so I have also sent them into the world. For what? As I mentioned, people are hurting, people are struggling, people are going through tough times. God has sent us into the world so that we will be the you know, leaning shoulder. We will be the supporting hand. As we discussed, you know, learned in the morning, not the financial thing, moral support. Stand with them. You know, encourage them. That's what God is asking us. As God sent Jesus Christ to this world, even Jesus Christ has sent us to this world so that people are hurting, we will stand at the gap with them. People are going through tough times, we will stand with them. And Jesus Christ wants us to go into the world and set them free, those who are in struggle. That means you and I are called to uproot everything which is owned by the evil. That's why Jesus Christ is sending us to this world. So we must uproot every poverty. We must uproot every sickness. We must uproot every struggle. We must uproot every bondages in somebody else's life so that they will come to know the knowledge of Christ and the environment is completely changed. Verse 19, now, for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Jesus Christ does not need any sanctification. He himself is a God, but yet, he sanctified himself for our sake so that we might be sanctified. So to prove everything that, you know, God has given us. That's what he's saying. He became the holy sacrifice for us. That's what NLT says. We can be made holy and spread that holiness to others by God's truth. You know, there is a problem with the Christian. Every time we see the word through the world, then the offense comes. If you see the world through the word, everything is easy. But we see the other way around. That is why the struggle comes. Every time when the word is preached, we see from the worldly point of view, then the offense comes. But if you see the world through the word, no offense will come. You will be able to overcome the word. That is why the word is very, very important for every one of us. Whenever the word is preached, you will take it so that you will not see them through the world, but you will see the world through the word, and then it will cut everything. The surgery will be done properly and will come out. That's what will happen. The devil knows our weaknesses. The devil knows our weaknesses. You don't have to remind the devil because we were part of his kingdom once. But now we have come out. So it knows our weaknesses very clearly. That's why it will keep on throwing somewhere other the garbage, the trash, which you are attracted to it. It will throw. It will throw. But if you see everything through the word of God, you will fear God. You will scan it. Amen. Even your luggage cannot be entered into the luggage cabin without scanning. 
how much more we have to scan ourselves in the word of God before we enter into this world. Every day we must scan ourselves into the word of God so that the environment will be very clean and that's what will happen. And the devil will be keep on you know, tempting us to go back to the world and it will also create numerous opportunities for us to fall away. But if you see everything through the word of God, it will never touch or it can never touch us. That's why when we have the desire to have anything, you must see the desire through the word of God. That's why God says, you know, pray anything according to the will of God. That means the will of God is the word of God. If you pray through the word of God, the desires, you will know which is the word or which is the word of God. And the word will set us free from every wrong desire. So the word of God is very, very important. And the word of God will enable us to surrender ourselves. The word of God is what? Jesus Christ is the word, right? And when he appeared to Jacob, he wrestled with Jesus. He wrestled with God and he gave himself to God's will. So the word of God, what will happen? There will be a tug of war between your flesh and the word. And all the time when the, you know, allow the word to do the surgery, you will subdue every fleshly attitude. And then, you know, God will enable us to surrender ourselves to the word of God completely so that, you know, it is not going to against, even though at times it is against our will, but the word of God will convince us to surrender unto God. Very importantly, we must be an example. I mentioned to you, the environmental change must happen through your prayer, through your holiness, through the word of God, praise and worship. And the fourth thing must be an example. We must portray an example of God in this earth. 1 Timothy 4.12 Let no man despise thy youth, but be the one example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. I'm not talking about the age, but let's not be like a childish act, you know, let's not have the childish act so that the people will say, by mistake I have given to him. He's like a child. I do not know that I have done it. Yeah? So let's not, you know, let not anybody despise us because we act like a child at times. That's what it means. And then there is no playfulness in the kingdom of God. The people will despise our playfulness and let's not happen. Do not act in such a manner that any shall despise you on account of our youth. That means we are immature, we are chill, still childish people. That's what people will do. But we have to be an example to the world in everything, to all the believers. So that the ministry would not be blamed but honored. Amen. Everyone is given a ministry but we handle it as an example to others to lead somebody so that the ministry which is God, is God has given to us would not be blamed but honored. Be an example to all the doctrine. Doctrine is the word of truth. We must be an example to the word of truth. That means we speak only the truth, not our philosophy, not our circumstances, not we heard from somebody. We don't speak, but we speak the word, the truth, we speak. Amen? And our conversation, which is very important in our home, how we converse with the people in our public places how do we concentrate or conversation how conversation with the people you know at times people make a joke which is impro you know inappropriate to the kingdom of god just move away from that joke you don't have to be part of it my boss even after he speaks he beats his mouth sorry sorry i spoke in front of you i said why you speak then don't speak but People should know that you must be an example that they cannot even crack jokes. You cannot have also bad conversation with them. That's very, very important. We must be an example into this atmosphere. And then it's very, very important in love. Yeah? The word I said, the charity now, the love. The love is what we learned this morning. All of us are in that third grade love. It's not a very third grade I'm talking about. We reach to the third level of love, every one of us. But God wants us to progress to the fourth level of love, which is the agape love, undivided love. Love to God, love to man. That is very, very important. We must be an example that undivided love to be portrayed in everyone's life. And then it is coming what? In spirit. Spirit is very, very important. Spirit is not the Holy Spirit, but your spirit and my spirit. When we do a thing, in the house of God, example, I'll take it this way. When you do a thing in the house of God, if my heart, if my love is not there, 
That means my spirit is not right. Better don't do it. Don't do it. You do it in your spirit, completely surrender and be an example you are doing unto the Lord God Almighty, not for any man. Even the work I am doing in my company, I don't work my, for my boss. But I work for the Lord because God placed me there. If we have that in our mind, then we will not do any mistake, right? So the same thing, then how much more in the house of God? You are not doing it for Pastor Sam. You are not doing it for anybody, anybody else. But you are doing it unto the Lord God Almighty. Do it with your spirit. Anything is done in an unholy way, unholy way. Anything is done in an uncharitable way. It is going to produce no fruit. It will produce unfruitfulness. Faith is not about your faith. This word is taken from the Greek, fidelity. The fidelity means your faithfulness, you should be an example. When I speak faithfulness, when I speak loyalty, when I speak commitment, people tell me, you're talking legalism. No, I'm not talking legalism. God wants us to be an example in everywhere. That means you prove yourself in faith, not your faith in the Lord, your faithfulness, the fidelity in the Lord, that your faithfulness into the house of God, your loyalty in the house of God, your commitment to the house of God, you be an example. Let people learn from you and then move on. That's very, very important. And that actually preserving and delivering up when it's needed. Whatever is given to you on time, it's needed, it's delivered. Don't deliver after the time is expired. Deliver it with the faith, that means the faithfulness, with the commitment, you deliver it on time when it is needed. Don't procrastinate in the house of God. If the task is given today to be done, do it today. Because you are doing it unto the Lord God Almighty. The standards are high. And everything, you should do it as an example in purity. In purity, you must do it. That means my mind is chastised, my heart is chastised, my body is chastised, and I am an example in my purity. And I deliver everything in the house of God. And the atmosphere has changed. You know, we are all so busy, right? We are, everyone is busy. Everyone is busy. We think tomorrow we will be free so we can do the work, of, work in the house of God. Tomorrow we'll be more busy. Some may think, okay, next year I will do it because this year I'm busy. Next year I will start doing something else in the house of God or something. What I'm doing now, I'm not able to do it. I'll start next year. Next year you'll be more busy. Now you have one child, Sherin. Next year you'll have two children, right? You'll be more busy, right? If I think I'll retire and then I'll serve the Lord, you'll never be able to serve the Lord in retirement because retirement is more busy. It is better to go to work than sitting at home. If you ask my wife, she will tell you. She wants to run out from the house because she's so busy in the house. Work is easy than to manage a home. So if you think that I will do later on the house of work in the house of God, you will never be able to do it today. If it is given you today, do it today. Deliver it today. Because it is not you, you know, getting the power. It is God is giving the one strength to you to do everything in the house of God. And if you do it right today, in spite of your busy schedule, if you do it, God will give you more time to serve him. And that's the God we serve. Another important thing, we must be a pestilent in the kingdom of devil. We must be what? Pestilent into the kingdom of devil. Acts 24 verse 5. For we have found this man who, Paul, the people Jews talking about Paul. We have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of Nazarenes. See? Don't be a threat in the church, by the way. You be the threat into the kingdom of devil. Don't be a ringleader in the church but be a ringleader to the devil. The devil should fear you, not the church, by the way. You must be the pestilent to the devil, not to the church. We don't want any pestilent here. The word of God is the pestilent here. But you go as a pestilent to the outside world and clean everything which is troubling the people of God. That's what we need to do. People were afraid of Paul and called him that he was a pestilent. They called him a ringleader. He became in the hit list of the devil. But to the churches, he was like a tree. People were experiencing the shade. People were experiencing the comfort. People experiencing the deliverance. That is what we need to do. We must be the pest control, not the pestilent in the church. Pest control in the church, in the sense we avoid every termite from the church and then we serve the Lord God Almighty. That's what we need to do. 
We must be like the tree in the society that takes what? Tree, what it does? It gives shade, yes, in the night. It takes all the carbon dioxide and it releases the oxygen. Or the daytime, sorry. In the night it releases actually carbon dioxide. Okay? So, it's not that I'm saying you take the trash, no. But the prayer which you make, the worship you make, the praise you make, the amount of time you spend in the Lord God Almighty will enable you to convert into oxygen to many people that the environment is completely changed and people will inhale the oxygen from you and that's what God is asking you. I'm not saying that you take the garbage. I'm not saying that you take the garbage, but you convert everything. By the way, the world is getting updated every day. The world, every second is getting updated. How much more? The people of God must be updated in God or in his kingdom. We must be updated. Because rather, the devil is working over time to do everything against the will of God, against the word of God. But we must be updated in the kingdom of God. I'll take five more minutes. I'll talk to my pastor again, the outside pastor who is waiting. I'll apologize later on. But we'll finish the word. Elijah stood as one tree in the midst of 850 prophets, right? And what he did, he brought the chain and he brought the people into the God back to the Lord. That's what he did. We must build, but not to tear. We must build, not to tear. And we must be not troublemakers, but what? We must be peacemakers. We have to make peace within the church and outside. We cannot make trouble inside the church. We cannot do that. Church is the cleaning, cleansing agent in the community. We cannot pollute the church by any means. Church must be as the pest control to destroy every termite, but we are trying to destroy each other in the church. Let's not do it. Let's not do it. It's not our duty to do it. Because as I said, don't turn back and sing, my Satan has fallen. He's not your Satan, and I'm not your Satan. You're not my Satan. We are family, and I come back to you later about that. Now, Church must display the unity to this world, to this undivided world. To this divided world, we must teach the unity. People are looking unto us that we are, must live in unity. Church must be in the place of love in this hatred world. We must portray the love of God. Church is the place of holiness into this unholy world. We must portray holiness into this unholy world. Church is the place of truth in this lying world. We must be in that way. Church is who? You and me are the church. We cannot just put our legs up and blame the pastor as if he is the responsible for everything and I do all the mischievous things. Church is you and me. Church is you and me. If we are right, the church will be all right. Right or not? I tell my wife always, if you are happy, the house is happy. That's it. If she is upset, the whole house is upset. The whole house is upside down. The same thing, if the bride is happy, then the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, is happy. If Jesus is happy in this church, then our pastor will be happy and everyone will be happy. So, church is you and me. But what we do, we take the blame and we put it on somebody else, we put it on pastor. No, this is church. No, he is not the church. He is just under shepherd. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. We must act well lubricated so that we bring the change in the atmosphere. In the smallest of small my mind, I understood the meaning of the church. I'll, I took it from the scripture, Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. We'll take five more minutes, Pastor, please. Now, you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. Who? We come from different background, right? I come from a Hindu background, somebody come from Catholic background, somebody come from another, you know, faith, everyone. But today, what? No, you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all God's holy people. That means I become holy because God made me to be with you because you are already holy people. I came in between and God made me holy. So we become God's holy. And you are the members of God's family. That is a house. When I am a member in your family, we are the house, right? Okay. Now next verse, we are his house. His house is what? The church. That means you and I are in the house and we are his house. Built on what? The foundation of the apostles, maybe the pastors, their founders, the you know, pioneers, they build it or the foundation. And then the chief cornerstone will never change. He is the Jesus Christ. That means we are 
his house and that means we are his temple now this is very important we who believe in jesus christ are carefully joined together becoming a holy temple for the lord this is a simple meaning i understood about the church who we believe in jesus christ are carefully joined by jesus christ so we become the temple of the living god that means god did not make any mistake when he put you in amazing grace church god did not make any mistake when he placed all of us in amazing grace church because the bible says he joined us very carefully to be the temple of the most high god that means it is my house imagine i spit about like this and thinking that it's not falling on me it will fall on fall, fall on me you are not spitting on somebody else but you are spitting on your own self when you talk about church people are looking to the church to change everything the world things but we go into the world and trying to do some something which is not right we must portray unity we must portray holiness we must portray the truth from the church so that this church will be become a sanitizer to the world the unclean world and that is what god is looking for do we do that can we do that because you and i if you blame that i become in this a part of member of this church you are not blaming me by the way you are blaming jesus christ because he joined us carefully his joining will never go wrong right. only thing we don't find our place right. brother is brother sister is sister in my house i have four bedrooms right my daughter is living in one room i am living in one room my guest is living in another room for example but when when we come together in the table we eat together right most of the time we don't see also in our children because they are busy with their style studies and we are busy with our own life but at least we meet and in the food my father taught us one very good thing when we were growing up though we come from very you know strange background heathen background but he taught me one thing very good if ever you have eaten in somebody's house you should never think evil against them that's it that means you have eaten in their house you should not think any evil this is mostly in south i i think it should be all over the world but he taught us now church is a place where we break bread together i eat the same manna which you eat i eat the same bread which you eat i eat the same spiritual food which you eat then how much more we should not think evil against each other we should be together hey my brother is you know struggling let me give a hand as i said one man is in the hospital but we are ready to do the hospital ministry but we don't want to pray our own how come we are working for only the name sake no we must be in action everywhere that is the environmental god is looking for the church must arise and do that change in our families by the way i also want to remind all of us this church always believing in raising up the people from the scratch we follow the method of jesus christ jesus christ called the disciples from where from from the seashore when they were catching fish they were not pharisees they were not the church leaders they were not active members in the other church but jesus built from the scratch and then he raised them up and released them to the world we don't hunt people from church to church by the way to do something we don't hunt the people we raise from here and then we release them to serve the lord that's what we believe amazing grace believe in that very strongly and i take i watch for it because i have seen it in the past 13 years this church believes raising up people from the scratch and then train them and put them in the world to preach and then some people what they do they allow you to grow in this church and then they come in between and they take you no if you want to build build from the scratch you don't have to take somebody already grown up here when i invest my time with you all these years in this church and all of a sudden you kick me out this is not a corporate world by the way you know today you work as a ceo in microsoft and tomorrow you work ceo as in google no you cannot go like this they give you higher pay no you belong to this house that's why i said we break bread together in this house and we must work in this house because my father is here my family is here my friends are here my sisters are here my children are here so we must work in this house 
to bring this house up everywhere. We don't pull the people from other churches. Have you ever seen Amazing Grace has gone to another church and asked them, give me your people to support our ministry? No. Even the LCU, we are very clear. You learn here, but you go and do your work there. We don't, you know, gather people like, we don't canvas people. If anybody of us doing it, please stop it from doing it. It is not good. Let anyone, Jesus Christ method, we will follow. Even he did not touch the disciples of John the Baptist, by the way. He raised from the scratch and then built them and released them. That is what every church must do. Imagine every church raising a group of people. I always tell proudly to the people, even when I preach in LCU or I teach in LCU, I tell them, for God forbid, amazing grace is scattered, tomorrow 200 church will rise. Everyone is given that vision. Everyone is fed with the vision. Everyone is taught in that vision. Everyone is trained in that vision. That's what we should do. If they want to build their own, let them start from the scratch and do it. And then let them grow. Because that actually, God will honor it. As I mentioned to you last study, in 2 Chronicles, Amaziah king, he was doing everything right in the eyes of God. But his heart was not perfect. His heart was not perfect. We may do everything right in the eyes of, eyes of God. But if our hearts are not perfect, that will go on. And we have to be careful. Anything you do in this house of God, do it wholeheartedly. Don't worry who gets the credit, by the way. Yes. If my brother gets the credit, let him get it. He's anyway my fellow brother, my fellow sister, right? Let him get the credit. But the work of God, the work of my father's house is done. That's important. Who does it? Who gets the credit? You join it. Who gets the credit? No problem. Let, let the work of God be happened. And we must make an environment which is a beautiful heaven in this community and that's what God is asking us do it wholeheartedly don't do it casually by the way don't do it casually those who help in the health ministries prepare yourself before you come you know prepare yourself if in our house our function is happening our celebration is happening what you will do you will decorate the house right if a birthday party comes you decorate if any celebration comes you decorate the house how many of us we decorate before we come into the house of God, ourselves into the, uh, the, the mode of prayer, into the mode of worship, into the mode of praise, into the mode of you know, thanksgiving, we decorate and then we come. Don't become an ex a spectator in the house of God, by the way. Because spectator, what he'll do? Let me see today what he will preach. Let me see this man, how he'll lead the meeting. Let me see how she will play or he will play the instrument. Let me see how you know, uh, the man will close in prayer. No. We are active partners in the kingdom of God. You put yourself in the work of God. You don't come with a spectator heart, but expectant heart you come. Hey Baba, God is going to speak today to somebody. You pray much and come. And how, whenever you pray and ask God, Lord, today in the church, your glory will come down. Your people will be blessed. Your people will be touched. God will never disappoint you. God will never disappoint you. Pray before you come. Prepare yourself before you come. I'm not talking about only the worship leader or the person who is bringing forth the word, who oh, those who are going to lead the meeting. No, every one of us must prepare ourselves. It is our celebration in the house of God. That means we must decorate our house. We leave every celebration in the own house. We go and decorate somebody else's house. It is wrong. God does not allow that. Imagine in my house there is a wedding. My daughter is going and attending another wedding. I will slap her by the way. I will tell her first take care of your house. Even in the flight, they teach you, first put your mask on your nose and next to your neighbor you attend. You don't run away and put somebody else. That is wrong. That kind of environment, we have to change it. I'm not against to going and helping somebody, by the way. I'm not against it. We help everyone. But I don't ignore my daughters. I don't ignore my wife. I don't ignore my own house to help somebody else. I don't put their life in jeopardy and then help somebody know. God doesn't allow that also. God is very careful. Still you people love me? Yes. Praise God. If I'm emotional, please forgive me. I've said, it's not point to any particular person, it's not particular group or a particular ma a family. It is for all of us. Yes. Everywhere, somewhere or other, we fall into that category. That's why God wants us to change that environment. If you do your work in a proper way, then God will honor you in every way. Prepare yourself. And that's what God is asking us. Again, the closing verse. Let's all arise.
Matthew 16, 19. I will give unto the keys, unto thee the keys of kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The keys are in your hand. What do we do with those keys? Are you ready to bring that environmental sanitation through your living so that the purpose of God in our lives will be fulfilled in your prayer, in your praise and worship, in your learning of your word, as an example, as a pestilent, and as a church. God wants us to be a environmental sanitation into this environment, into this world. God bless you, and I thank you. Father, we pray for this evening, O God. Let your word take root in our hearts, O my master, and examine ourselves, O God, this evening, so that, Lord, we'll be able to work and bring that change which you want us to bring into this world in the name of Jesus. Give us the perfect heart, O God, this evening, so that, Lord, we'll be able to serve you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anything, O God, is pulling us down, anything, O God, is diverting us, O God, anything is distracting us, O God, O Father, help us to shun away from that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are one family, O God. We are your holy temple, O God. We are carefully joined together for a purpose, O God, and we will do the things you called us to do in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every environmental oh Lord, calamity, every environmental uncleanness, every environmental pollution, O oh God. We will change it. We will be the sanitizers, O oh God, to bring that cleanness and holiness in this world in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless each and every one of us, O oh God, as we gather here, O oh God, to learn of your word. O oh Lord, I speak for the great harvest 30, 60, 100 in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your word will take root in our hearts, O oh my master. Bless every marriage in this church. Bless every child in this church. Bless every youth in this church. Bless every single in this church. Bless every couple in this church. Bless every job and man, O oh Lord, business in this church, O oh God. And your name, alone. Fight for them in the name of upon your nation. And all of us said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you and good night. Please.